Under the supplier settings on AutoDS, we can set and configure how we want to work with every one of our supported suppliers on the AutoDS system. And here's exactly how that works and every option that we have. So first we're going to click on settings. Then we'll click on supplier settings. And here we can choose what store we would like to address all of these changes to when working with any one of these chosen suppliers. So let's take it from the top. First, we're going to choose what store we want these changes to take effect in. In this case, I'm going to keep it on Pet Shop Discount, which is a Shopify store. Then we're going to choose what supplier we would like to change the settings on. So in this example, we see all of these suppliers, for example, Amazon in the different regions, US, UK and Spain. Same thing for AliExpress, Banggood, Walmart, Home Depot and other suppliers that we support. If you do not see your supplier on this list, simply click on add supplier down here below and select which supplier you would like to add to the list as well as which region for that supplier. Then you can choose if you want to go with the recommended settings or copy the same settings that you already have from another supplier. So in this example, let's set up the Amazon US supplier information for our pet shop discount Shopify store. So the first column is the lister settings when listing from Amazon US to my Shopify store. And the first option under lister settings is the default product quantity. So for every product that I list from Amazon US to my Shopify store, what is the default item quantity that I want for every product? So of course you can change this variable to whatever you want. So if I change it to five, then I'm going to have five units in stock for every product that I list to my store. Then we've got the default item country and the default city, which in other words is the item location. So for this example, I'm setting the Amazon US supplier settings so I can keep the default item country in the United States and choose a default city in the US. Then we've got the shipping methods. So for the product that I choose under Amazon US, do I want the system to take into consideration the cheapest shipping method available for that product or the cheapest shipping method with tracking available? Or do I want the system to choose the fastest shipping method with tracking available no matter what the price is? I'm going to go with the cheapest shipping method with tracking information. Then we've got the default template. So in this example, I could go with any of the template that I have at my disposal. And here you also have lots of free templates that are available for you on AutoDS. And here we can enable or disable all kinds of additional settings. For example, do we want to allow duplicates? Or in other words, if I try to import the same product twice, do I want to allow that or not allow it or upload variations? So when I import a product, do I also want to import all of the variations that are associated with it or just that single product as a standalone? Then we've got autofill brand. So do I want the brand to be autofilled for me or do I want to fill it in myself? Allow marketplace sellers. In other words, if the product goes out of prime or is not a prime product to begin with, do I still want to sell that product? Do I want it to be active or do I want it to go out of stock? So if I allow marketplace sellers and I try to import a product that's not prime, the system will allow me to do it. Or if the product was prime and goes out of prime and is now a marketplace selling product, it will still allow it if I have it checked in. Then we've got add categories to tags. So the categories are automated for us as soon as we import the product. So do we want the categories to be added to our Shopify tags? Capitalized title means do we want to capitalize the first letter of each word in our title? Do we want to duplicate our main image up to 12 images? Do we want to allow Vero or blocked keywords? Do we want to allow out of stock variations? So in other words, if we're trying to list a product that has an out of stock variation, do we still want to import that out of stock variation? Apply watermark to our images. And you can also set your watermark in the settings. Split variants into products. So in other words, if I allow uploading variations over here, I can also split the variants into products. And then what will happen is every product that I import that has variations, every variation will be split to a different standalone product instead of all of the variations being under that same product page. So here we're going to have a standalone page for every product. Below the advanced lister settings, we have default item specifics. So here, for example, if I know that I'm going to go with a certain niche and they're all going to have the same item specifics, I can add them here. And every time I add a product from Amazon US to my Shopify pet shop discount store, the same default item specifics will always load up. So for example, let's say I'm only going to import dog collars to this store. So I'm going to create a default item specific called type and dog collar. Then I'm going to click on add. 
And now every time I import a product, it's gonna get this property in the item specifics when importing from Amazon US to my Shopify store. Once you're done making changes, go ahead and click on save and let's move on to the next column. Now we're on pricing. So this is the pricing and profit settings for every time we import a product from Amazon US to our Shopify store in this very example. Here are the pricing options that we have. First is our fees. So every time I import a product, in this example from Amazon US to my Shopify store, how many fees am I paying Shopify? So in this example, we're gonna go with 15% in fees. Now your fees is your break even. You need to know how to build up your break even, what your expenses are, like your selling channel fees, your category fees, and so forth, and round them all up here to a percentage. If you also have a fee that you're paying in a fixed price, for example, 30 cents for every sell, add it here too. Then configure how much you would like to profit after paying these fees. So for example, I wanna add another 30% in profit. Then you have an option to add an additional profit in a fixed dollar price. So for this example, I'm gonna add another $1 in fixed profit for every order. And so here's what we did up until now. If a product, for example, costs $100 for us to purchase, and we wanna make 30% profit plus another $1 in profit, and we're paying 15% fees, which comes to $23.17, plus another 30 cents fee, the total product price that's gonna come out is $154.47, and that is going to be our selling price. Now, we still have more dynamics here, and I'm gonna get to that in a second. So let's scroll down to default automation. The default automation is if you want to add an automatic pricing setting for every range of price that you have on your website. Let's simplify that explanation. So I'm gonna turn on dynamic profit and here I have a product cost range. So here, for example, I can set that every product that costs between $0 to $50, I wanna make 30% in profit plus another $1 in fixed profit. Now let's add another rule. For every product that costs between $50 to $100, I wanna make 28% profit plus another 50 cents in fixed profit. And you can add and remove rules as you see fit. This automatic pricer will help you price your products better and reach your true profit potential that you have set for every range of product pricing. Then we've got the additional pricing settings. So here for Shopify, I can add the compare price and this is gonna add a price slasher to the original price. And here, for instance, I can choose whether I want it to be in percentages or in dollars. So for example, I'm gonna put a 20% price slash on every one of the products that I import. So the final price that I'll see is the price that I set after having a 20% price slash, which looks good to the customer when he's viewing your product because it makes it look like the product is on sale and it's a really good time to buy right now. Then we've got the set price sense value. So this rounds up your cents price to whatever you want it to be. For example, I can round up every price to 99 cents or 97 cents or 49 cents or whatever you see fit. So this total price of $151.53 is gonna be rounded up to $151.97 in this example. And last but not least, we've got include shipping price. This means that even if the supplier is going to charge me $5 for shipping, for example, the system is going to round up those $5 into our original source price. So if the product costs $20 plus $5 shipping, the system will see it as $25 in source price, and then it's going to calculate our break even and our total profit. Once we're done, we're gonna click on save. And that is how to set the pricing settings on the AutoDS system. Here are the supplier's order settings for every time I get an order, from the chosen supplier on the left side. Remember, you can add a new supplier and choose any one of our supported suppliers in any one of our supported regions. And in this example, we're going with Amazon US as a supplier and the Shopify store out of all the stores that I have connected here. So here's the first option that we see. Order settings, process orders using the fulfilled by AutoDS service. Then we've also got automatic orders, and then we've also got hip shipper. Here's the explanation on what each and every one of those means. The fulfilled by AutoDS service automates and fulfills all of your orders for you without having to use your own buyer account. In other words, the system has lots and lots of buyer accounts through our supported suppliers, and we can fulfill your orders for you using the system's buyer accounts. All you have to do is top up your fulfilled by AutoDS balance and make sure that you have automatic orders turned on. 
Once you do that and add auto order credits, you'll be able to fulfill your orders using the Fulfilled by AutoDS service. So what's the difference between having Fulfilled by AutoDS service on as well as automatic orders? If you have both of them filled in and you opted in to Fulfilled by AutoDS, then every order will be fulfilled automatically as soon as it comes in. But if you're using Fulfilled by AutoDS and you do not have automatic orders filled in, then every order will come in pending status and you will have to switch the order status manually from pending to send to auto order. This will give you the opportunity to go over your order settings and approve it before sending it out to your buyer. But again, if you have both of them filled in, then every order that comes into the Fulfilled by AutoDS service will be fulfilled automatically, even while you travel, even while you're outside, even while you're sleeping, and this way your buyers are going to get their packages much, much quicker. Then we've got Hip Shipper. This is for anyone selling on eBay that wants to open up their listings internationally so that anyone around the world can purchase their product and not just their domestic market. We have more explanations on that on our YouTube channel and on our help section on AutoDS. But if you signed up with HipShipper and you want the system to automatically fulfill HipShipper orders too, as soon as an international order comes in, the system will send it to HipShipper's warehouse instead of trying to fulfill the order internationally. So check that in if you're dropshipping on eBay and if you're working with HipShipper and you want the automatic orders to send it to HipShipper's warehouse every time you have a HipShipper order. Then we've got override customer's phone number. So when an order comes in, do we want to add the customer's phone number in the order details or do you want to add your number or any random number so that your customer won't get any sms that he's getting a package from your supplier and we have mark order as delivered automatically after a certain amount of days just in case it wasn't moved automatically to delivered after the status moved from order to shipped then we have set order as shipped so do we want our orders to move to the ship status as soon as the order was shipped out with tracking information, as soon as the order was ordered from the system or from us, as soon as the order was processed, or as soon as received in the system. Tracking conversion means do we want to convert our Amazon tracking numbers to a trackable tracking number which will be better used on eBay and Shopify stores so that our customers will be able to track orders that were fulfilled by Amazon. So this plays into two types of tracking information that we get from Amazon. Trackable, like UPS, USPS, where we can see what's going on with the packages, or AMZ tracking numbers, which uses Amazon's logistics. And this way we can't really track our packages if we're not using our Amazon buyer accounts. So here we can choose if we would like to disable tracking conversion, or we can convert all of our orders tracking numbers to Blue Care Express or the Amazon on shipping carrier only or all tracking numbers to aqualine or all tracking numbers to q track so we work with three different tracking conversion service providers they all have their advantages you can learn more about that again on our help center and on our YouTube channel. Then you've got the maximum purchase order price. So if you do not want to exceed a certain order price, you can set that limit here, as well as maximum loss. If for any reason you lost money on an order and you do not want to lose over a certain number, add that number here and the system will not process the order if you are losing this much or more. Next, we've got automatic messages sent to our customers. So this is a gift message that we can send when using Amazon as a supplier. So here's where we can send an automatic message. I'm going to click on edit. Then we're going to say from your store, whatever your store's name is, and whatever message you want to send your buyer. Thank you for buying from us. We appreciate it and hope the product meets your satisfaction. Don't forget to leave a positive review and etc 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 you can also add in all kinds of triggers like the buyer's first name so thank you for buying from us buyer's first name and it'll show their first name you can do the same thing for their last name you can add the product's title store name and so forth then once you're done click on save and this is the gift message that every buyer is going to get from us once they receive their package and that is it for the supplier's order settings once we're done, we're gonna click on save. Now let's move over to the next column. Under the supplier's general settings, we can set options like the default weight unit for every product that we list. In other words, do we wanna go with grams, pounds, ounces, or kilograms? This will be the default weight unit for every product. Then we've got automatic SKU filling. It is recommended not to have this option on just to make it more difficult for our competitors to be able to find our sources, or in other words, where we're purchasing this product from, who is our supplier. Then we've got monitoring automation. So what is the minimum product quantity 
that our suppliers should have in order for this product to still be in stock on our stores. In other words, if I have my minimum product quantity on three, but the supplier only has two units left, then this product is gonna go out of stock on my store until the supplier has a minimum of three product quantities left for that same product. Then we've got the maximum shipping days. So same goes for the maximum shipping days. If I have it set to 10, but it takes a supplier 11 or 15 or 20 shipping days to ship out this order, then that is above our maximum setting. The product will go out of stock on our store until the supplier has 10 or less maximum shipping days, which then the product will go back in stock on our stores. Next, we've got choose from suppliers table. This means do we wanna choose the supplier on Amazon in this example, that is the cheapest supplier, the cheapest seller, selling that product or do we want to go for prime first so first make sure that it's prime then go for the cheapest one under prime last but not least we've got prime only if we do not have this checked in then we allow marketplace sellers to sell our items too simply put if we have prime only then we will only have listings in stock on our stores from Amazon that's using the Prime service. If the product is not Prime or was Prime when we imported it, but went out of Prime sometime, then the product will no longer be listed as in stock on our stores. If and when the product goes back to being a Prime product, then it will go back in stock on our stores. So Prime only means do we wanna sell only products that are Amazon Prime, or do we also want to allow marketplace sellers? And that way, if even if the product is not prime, we're still going to have it in stock on our stores. That is it for the general settings. Click on save when done. And that is how to set all of the supplier settings for any one of the suppliers that you choose.